you find yourself standing on the muddy banks of a lush river 113 million years ago. The heat is scorching as the chorus of distant dinosaur calls echoes through the dense foliage. In an instant, the water surface ripples as a colossal creature bursts forth, its elongated snout lined with rows of sharp, glistening teeth. With a massive body stretching the length of a bus, it suddenly dwarfs everything in sight. As it crawls onto the shores, its eyes fixed on unsuspecting prey, the ferocity of this ancient predator leaves you breathless. This is Sarcosuchus Imperator. Our understanding of Sarcosuchus Imperator began in the sun-scorched sands of the Sahara Desert, where secrets of the deep past lay beneath the dunes. The Sahara's unique geological history, with its ancient river systems and sedimentary layers, created ideal conditions for preserving these fossils over millions of years. Throughout the 1940s and 50s, French paleontologist Félix de Laparente led several expeditions to the Sahara, discovering the first Sarcosuchus remains. These initial findings included fragments of the skull, vertebrae, teeth, and scutus. They were relics of a monstrous creature whose existence had been long forgotten. The initial reactions were a mix of awe and puzzlement. The fossils hinted at a crocodilomorph far larger than any alive today. For years, these fragments remained the only clues to the mysterious giant. Then, in 1964, an almost complete skull was found in Niger, culminating two years later in the species being officially named and described. These discoveries set the stage for further significant finds a generation later. By the early 2000s, the scientific community had access to most of its anatomy, such as a skull measuring nearly 1.8 meters in length and one individual consisting of almost 50% of its body, including most of the spine, answering many of the questions that once puzzled scholars. As of today, these discoveries in Niger remain the only known specimens of Imperator, making the site particularly significant for understanding this specific species and its habitat during the early Cretaceous period. However, Sarcosuchus Imperator was not the only species in its genus. Another, the smaller Sarcosuchus hati, was identified from remains found in Brazil, providing further insights into the diversity of this fascinating group. Sarcosuchus Imperator was a titan of its time. Stretching over 12 meters, about 39 feet in length, and weighing around 8 metric tons, approximately 17,600 pounds, it was one of the largest crocodile-like reptilians to ever roam the Earth. Even among dinosaurs, its sheer size was enough to instill awe, but the details of its anatomy made it even more fascinating. Based on fossil analysis, beginning with its formidable skull, which alone was nearly 1.8 meters long, Imperator boasted an elongated snout filled with over 100 teeth. These weren't just any teeth, they consisted of sharp conical teeth, perfect for gripping slippery prey, and sturdier teeth capable of crushing bones. As for the snout, it featured a distinctive bowler at the end, a bulbous growth that may have been used for sound resonance or perhaps even during mating rituals. Moving along to its massive body, the creature was armoured with rows of osteoderms, bony plates embedded within the skin. These not only provided protection, but also structural support for its immense weight. In terms of movement, despite its bulk, Sarcosuchus was well adapted to an aquatic lifestyle, with strong limbs and a powerful tail that propelled it through water with ease. One intriguing aspect is its growth pattern. Some studies of bone rings suggest that the croc-like creature experienced indeterminate growth, meaning it continued to grow throughout the entirety of its life. If true, this trait would explain why some individuals reach such colossal sizes, dominating their environment as they aged. These remarkable traits were not just physical attributes, but vital tools for survival. The combination of size, strength, and specialized features allowed Sarcosuchus to become an apex predator of its domain, limiting the population of certain prey species and influencing the behaviors of others, thereby enforcing considerable control over the ecosystem in which it was king. Through meticulous study of sedimentary layers and radiometric dating, scientists have determined that Sarcosuchus Imperator lived during the early Cretaceous, from around 133 to 112 million years ago, an astonishingly long span that showcased its successful adaptions. 
The world it inhabited was vastly different from today, especially from today's Sahara. The Sahara Desert, now a vast expanse of sand, was once a network of lush river systems and extensive floodplains. The warm, humid climate, with an average temperature around 32 degrees or 90 degrees Fahrenheit, provided the perfect environment for a diverse array of life. Dense vegetation, such as early flowering plants and towering conifers, lined the waterways, creating a vibrant ecosystem. Sarkasuka shared this world with an array of fascinating creatures. Dinosaurs like the sail-backed Aranosaurus grazed along the riverbanks, while the fish-eating Sukaminus prowled nearby waters. Ancient fish teemed beneath the surface, along with turtles and other aquatic reptiles. Interactions within this ecosystem were dynamic. Fossil evidence, including tooth marks found on dinosaur bones, suggests that the emperor crocodile likely preyed primarily upon large fish and unwary dinosaurs that ventured too close to the water's edge. Its presence would have been a constant threat, influencing the behavior and migration patterns of other species, even driving their evolution. Like many of its relatives, Sarcosuchus was not restricted to the water. Evidence from its robust limb bones and joint formations suggests that it could have moved on land, albeit less gracefully. This adaption would have allowed it to take advantage of prey both in the water and along riverbanks, adding to its fearsome reputation. As dominant as it was, though, even the mightiest creatures eventually fall, as environmental changes shift the balance of survival. While we don't have complete information about the decline of Sarcosuchus Imperator, we do know that climate played a critical role. As the early Cretaceous progressed, the environment underwent significant changes, with shifting climates and habitats affecting the species' distribution and ultimately contributing to its extinction. The reduction of waterways meant less territory and fewer resources for a creature heavily dependent on aquatic environments. As rivers dwindled, prey abundance decreased, and fewer dinosaurs frequented the shrinking water sources, leading to increased competition for less food. Climate fluctuations further compounded these challenges. Variations in temperature and precipitation patterns altered the ecosystems, favoring species that could adapt more readily to the new conditions. Smaller, more versatile crocodilomorphs began to emerge, their adaptions giving them an edge over the specialized giant. The cumulative impact of habitat loss, reduced food supply, and increased competition spelt the end for the emperor. Its massive size and specialized adaptions, once the key to its dominance, became liabilities in a world that left it behind. Thanks for joining me, my fellow apes, on this expedition into the extinct. If this glimpse into bygone biodiversity intrigued you, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell as we continue to explore more of the fascinating world that once was.